Hey, y'all. Welcome back to the Late Night Vision Show. This is episode number 188. My name is Jason. I am the owner of Outdoor Legacy, and I've got my co-host, the uh, executive producer, as he calls himself, of the podcast, Mm -hmm. Mr. Hans East Texas. And I'm going to tell you something about an executive producer. It doesn't mean that they still can't get all fumbled up and uh you know yeah. he was supposed to do the intro he just stumbled all over himself about three or four times and finally said here you just do it <laughs> so we <laughs> you do it because i my first intro was the best one yet and you pretty much said no I, we're no not I, going it's because so i was laughing it, so you hard at you being goofy <laughs> creatively yeah creatively you just ruined all the oh, mojo yeah, but yeah. this show Jason, this week is show jam packed. Just like last week, last week, uh, episode 187, we crowned our favorites for the best of uh, thermal scopes under $3,000. So that was a big show. Thank you all for watching, man. And thanks. Got a ton of views, ton of plays, lots of comments, lots of phone calls. And uh, we're excited tonight to be able to bring you uh, all the listeners and watchers out there, the best thermal scopes, our picks uh, for scopes under $4,000. So this show is so jam packed. And this category, Jason, is so stacked. That we don't even have time to talk about the fact that this past week I shot a stud of an East Texas buck, but we're going to save that for another time. We don't even have a, we don't even have time to talk about yeah, it. It's, so let's it's get true. into hey, it. Hey, I want to get into I, it. I, th- that is very true. Han shot a big buck, and we will be talking about that later in the show. Maybe maybe uh, maybe, maybe in January maybe. or something. But we'll be talking about exactly. it exactly. Sure. Yeah, when we I have do want to mention this we'll right now. If you have made it this far into the video, uh, you're probably about 90 seconds in. Hopefully, you're still with us and you're not bored yet. Uh, look, right now, if you do not want to watch this show, you do not want to hear all of our uh, wonderful, uh, you know, expert-filled commentary, and I say that with a smirk oh, on my man. face because I'm, I'm being sarcastic. If you don't want to, uh, you know, hear everything, you just really want to go down for the meat of it and find out, find out what our picks are. Right now, if you're on YouTube, drop down into the description, click the little arrow button, it will expand it. It's really long. It's got a lot of links, a lot of things in there. But Hans uh, takes the time every week to go through there and basically Uh cut out and make quick links to the different sections. Now, again, we want you to watch Mm -hmm. the whole show. But if you're one of these guys that you really don't care why we like the scopes, uh, you don't want to (laughs) know why we maybe didn't pick a scope for something, which we think is really important information. But if you don't care about that, you just want the picks, you can definitely go down to these links and uh, we'll get you taken care of. Can't imagine anybody that didn't want to hear our commentary in between the lines. But I tell you, hey, I'll tell you all our little, when we got thousands and thousands of loyal watchers watchers and listeners that uh, love what we do and they want to see the whole show. But um, I know, especially YouTube, and this is created special for YouTube, but there are people that visit these videos that search for this topic and they just want to see the meat and potatoes. I get it. So we put those links in. So we appreciate you. That is an option for you to go use those. Um, But I get it. When I Google how to replace a belt on a dishwasher or a a, a clothes washer, it's not, I don't want to hear, you know, everything about it. I just want to see them take it apart and put it on. (laughs) So I get it. I get it. But for all you loyal uh, listeners and watchers that have been with us for years, uh, we appreciate y'all tuning in, tuning in, and all you new people. Thank y'all again. Like I said, we have got the best thermal scopes, our choice for best of under four thousand dollars. And like I said, this category is stacked. Uh, Jason is. and I, in our pre-show meeting, um, laid all these out. We talked about everything. It's a tough decision. I mean, I sat here. I think there was like a three-minute moment of silence nope. when we were sitting here trying to Third lay these out and, and pick pick our choices. And and the first thing you said is, don't tell me, don't tell me. So yeah. we want to – we like surprising each other with our choices. We like kind of going back and forth and, and arguing in our case why our choice is better than, than the other person's choice. But at the same time, um, you know, we want to make sure that you all out there understand that um, – we're two guys that have different opinions. Uh, most of the time we think mostly alike, sure. I would say, but to find out if this situation or if this scope uh, matches your situation and you need help deciding other than what you're hearing on the show, you can always reach out to me. If you need purchasing advice, if you're trying to buy a scope, if you're in the market for a scope and you want to compare this scope versus something else, call us at 877-350-1818. Visit our website, outdoorlegacygear.com. 
You can talk to me or Jason personally. We can talk about this and we can talk you through it. I'll tell you what, y'all, um, we use all these scopes. We've, we pull two of these, every scope that you see on the show, every scope that pretty much that comes out on the thermal market, night vision market, we're using and we're testing it. We're using it that way. When you call, we can tell you the differences and what's the positives and disadvantages or whatever. Um, so use this, use this as a resource. And I know many of you do, cause I, I get guys all the time that says you told us to call. So or told us to call. So yeah. I'm calling you, but no, anyway, no, absolutely. And I want to say this scope. yeah, to what Hans is, is saying there, um, talking about, you know, choosing these things. I want to be very clear on this and we're, we're, look, we're fixing to get into the, the meat and potatoes of this, but our choice of what we pick may not even be remotely close to the scope that fits what your particular needs are. So the worst thing Mm -hmm. that you can do is just listen to this and say, well, Hans and Jason picked XYZ scope, so that's the one I'm going to buy. That's a great place (laughs) to start because we really like that scope. Um, If you are very familiar with our show, you've watched all the shows, and you know how we hunt, which we we talk about it a lot over a lot of the episodes. I know guys that, you know, they say all the time, we feel like we know you. We've watched every episode. We know how you hunt, what the fields are like. Those guys can watch this show and say, yep, if this is the, the, the one that Hans picks, I hunt just like Hans does, similar terrain, you know, a lot of coyotes and hogs, whatever, and they can know that's the scope for them. So that's where these shows really so, help our, our loyal listeners. But if you're just saying, man, I got to number it down some way, this is a good place to start. But like Hans said, give us a call. Let us help you. Uh, you know, we'll help you make the purchase, but we'll help you get in the right scope as well. So let me mention this before you go into the list of scopes and you're going to, you're going to, you're going to talk about this stack division, but uh, you're right. So what we want to do with these shows is not tell you the scope to buy. What we're trying to do is help you narrow your search right. so that when you do call us, you say, Hey, I'm interested in these three scopes, these three or two or three kind of fit my criteria. Let's talk about mm-hmm. them. So again, this isn't meant to necessarily crown a king in your mind as far as what you've got to buy. Uh, it's it's there to narrow your search, to make it easier for you to research and find more information sure. on on what scope might be right for you. So anyway, let's talk about it, man. Okay. Let's list them out. Here we go. So I'm going to try to, I'm going to go through this list. Um, what we're going to do is I'm going to list off the, the, the scopes, and then we're going to kind of come back through and just talk over this list, list briefly. Mm. Now, we're going to we're going to talk about this some more when we get done but i i hate this show because there's so many good <laughs> scopes this is, is the hardest show we'll do um, i'm hoping that they get easier yeah. from here on out because this is just a a, uh, a jam packed category uh, that you know I'll be honest with you 2 years was not and now the competition no, is yeah. hard and heavy so here we go uh, we're mm-hmm. going to start, we're going from the least expensive to the most expensive. So these are all, you know, basically under $4,000. Uh, so here they go. The Bearing Optics Super Hogster. That is a three power base magnification scope. It's $3,120. Next, we've got the Pulsar Thermion 2 XQ38. And that is a 2.5 power. It's $32.99. We've got the Infrared, or I-Ray as we call it here in the U.S. Most people know it by that, but the Infrared Bolt TL35. That is a three-power base mag, $32.99 as well. We've got the I-Ray USA Bravo. And that is a true I-Ray USA a custom scope mm-hmm. that they've had made uh, for the U.S. market. That is a three power base magnification and it is 30, I just went blank, 34 99. Uh, next, <laughs> we've got the Pulsar Thermion 2 XQ50. It's a three and a half power base mag and it's 37 99. Next on the list is the Infrared um, Iray Rico MK1 384. This scope mm-hmm. overseas is commonly referred to as an RL42. 
Uh, you will normally find this scope in the U.S., uh, which is where you need to be getting your information uh, referred to as a Ricoh 384, but the model is an RL-42. It is a four-power mm-hmm. base magnification, and it is 39 99. So it just barely squeaks under by a few pennies there uh, to get into this category. And then this scope I'm going to mention is very different from the rest of the scope in this, the scopes in this class. It's the first time we've ever had mm-hmm. anything like this uh, in one of our shows. Uh, we're going to talk about a 640 by 480 high resolution scope. Every one mm-hmm. of these other scopes is a 384 by 288 standard resolution. But AGM came in here with their very popular Rattler series, and they have a TS-35-640, two-power mm-hmm. base magnification, again, 640 uh, high resolution, for $39.99. Uh, we have reviewed, as far as I know, Hans, every single one of these scopes. I think we have mm-hmm. a review yeah. on the Late Night Vision show. You've reviewed a whole lot of them over on your channel Hans yeah. ETX, yeah. H-A-N-S-E-T-X yeah. over on YouTube as well. You can see a lot of his in-depth uh, reviews with footage and things from these optics. But I, I'm serious, so, guys, right now, <sighs> if we just closed our eyes, reached in a hat, and drew out a, a name, I could not say that, hey, that that's, that's could be just the best scope it'd be just fine i couldn't argue that any of these because they're so good and i mean that and i i'm before hans i'll let you talk but i just want to say this guys there's a lot of scopes in this category have been sold in the u.s in the last 12 Mm -hmm. months and if whatever we pick here if you go man i think my scope's better than that you know what i will not argue with you because i think (laughs) we are splitting hairs in this category so a couple of observations, this category, this $4,000 and under, it's basically $3,000 to $4,000 category, right. has the most entries or most contenders of any of the other categories we're probably going to be talking about, right off the top of my head thinking about it. And it's got probably the most thermal companies represented in this category, uh, right off the top of my head. So you got th- you got three iRay or infrared scopes. You got three different models in the three to four thousand dollar range. Uh, you've got a bearing optic scope. You got two pulsar scopes and an AGM that's scope. A lot. And I mean, that's a uh, like we kept talking about. It's a stack category. You know, you've got anything from a two power all the way up to a four power mm-hmm. optic in this category. Uh, you know, and you think back um, in the years past. You know, pulsar had. Uh, a couple other models too, you know, the XM series, which we're not going to talk about because they're not around anymore, but the XM 38, um, you know, XM 50, but you know, that this category now is bigger than it's, than it's ever been. And there's, you're right. The contenders, um, you can draw them out of a hat. They're all of them. You could make a case for every single one of them. And I think that was the biggest challenges. I think you can make a case for almost every single one of these of why these could be the overall pick for best scope uh, in this, in this, uh, Price yeah, and, so, and I want to bring up something, Hans. I, I should have mentioned this before. You mentioned the XM50, the Pulsar Thermion XM50. We didn't put that scope in this list, and the real reason I didn't do it is because I'm not sure that scope is sticking around. Um, we haven't seen right. any in a while. Uh, I, you know, I didn't get confirmation from Pulsar that it, for sure it's being discontinued. It may not be. Uh, I'll just tell you the truth. It's a five and a half power scope. It's the highest magnification thermal optic uh, that you know we mm-hmm. sell. It's the highest one I'm aware of on the market. It doesn't, yeah, it's just yeah. not a big seller. It's very, very specific for a, a select, small select number of people. We didn't put it in here because mm-hmm. we didn't know if it was going to stick around uh, or really even, you know, be here. We don't have them right now, so that's why I didn't put that in there. But that would just uh, muddy it up even more. So this is a, a tough category. But let, let's just real quick. I, I know we, we yeah. can't spend a, a ton of time, but let, let's just quickly kind of go over some of these scopes here. I, I just want to bring up Bearing Optics Super mm-hmm. Hogster. Uh, I would say this. If I had to pick what the best-selling scope has been in the last 12 months, and to be fair, I mean, that is one of the scopes that has been around the longest in this category. I mean, the Super right. Hawkster. So it's right. it's been on the market for all people are familiar with it. Uh, they've heard a lot of, you know, their buddies have got them, heard good things about them. That's probably the best-selling scope. It is it is fantastic. 
Uh, it is a small, compact design, takes two CR123A batteries, uh, has most all the normal features, and uh, it is just a really good image quality. You know, moving along here, we've got the Pulsar Thermion 2 XQ38. Uh, love this scope. If you listen to the show, you know Hans and I are big Pulsar Thermion fans. Uh, this optic looks like a daytime scope, 30 millimeter tube. Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, a, a uh, internal rechargeable battery as well as proprietary removable rechargeable batteries. Two and a half power, really a sweet spot for hog hunters. Uh, like this scope, works great on bolt guns, works great on ARs. So it's definitely uh, something that a lot of bolt gun hunters are going to lean towards. Um, the mm -hmm. br uh, the I'm sorry, the iRay Bolt TL35 again. Looks like a Thermion design, 30 millimeter tube. Uh, I mean, it's very, very similar. Uh, it's got internal batteries as well as you can put a uh, non-proprietary batteries in the uh, outside, you know, removable. Uh, it's probably got the best battery life. No, I'm looking here. It is the best battery life of any scope in this category because of these very good rechargeable batteries. Uh, again, really nice scope. Uh, at, at three power. Hans, go ahead and, and mm -hmm. tell them about some of these other scopes here. Yeah, so the iRay Bravo USA, uh, man, you talk about a very custom scope when it was talked about on the market as far as buzz. Uh, this is this one and another scope that they have yet to come out with but are soon to come out with. We hope uh, the, the, the Alpha, um, this is the younger brother, the, the Bravo. But the Bravo... 384 resolution, uh, 12 micron, three power, uh, a real good all around base magnification to start out of, uh, with, but it's got a, a lot of extras. American Defense Manufacturing mount, a magnetic USB port, tactile buttons, and a custom design. The only scope on this list that's not black. What else do I need to yeah, say? Right. I mean, it's, <laughs> you know, you know, uh, it's, uh, you know, it's got a, uh, a, a very, I'd say, um, user-friendly menu setup, uh, runs on two CR123 batteries. And uh, ultimately, I mean, <laughs> what makes it a big contender is the five-year warranty, the five-year IRA USA warranty. Uh, so that's a big deal. Uh, next, you got the Thermion 2 XQ50. I mean, these things are just workhorses, you know, back to the trail days, the trail XQ50s, you know, you've got the, the new Thermion design, uh, and now you've got the Thermion 2, which is the upgraded thermal sensor. And, um, you know, three and a half power, rechargeable batteries, all the extras and bells and whistles that, that Pulsar throws in, you know, more color palettes than any company in the industry, more reticle choices, uh, probably the easiest thermal scope on the market to use as far as setup, side in and, and uh, just uh, working out in the field. I mean, it, it's hard. It, there's so many good things to say about the Pulsar scopes that you could go on and on. But uh, again, the, the XQ50 is a, a big favorite, and I'm sure it'll pop up again here later in the conversation. But it's a big favorite for coyote hunters around the country. Um, you got the Rico MK1384, a new a newer scope on on the market. Uh, obviously, 384 resolution. It's a four power base magnification. So. This is a very specific scope for a very specific type of hunter. Uh, but I'm going to tell you, those people that have gone with this choice because they're wanting something with higher base magnification, absolutely love it. If you saw my review on the Hans ETX YouTube channel of this scope, I said this scope has the image quality almost as good as a 640 scope. If you look through it, you might think it is a 640 resolution scope, but it's not. It's 384. It comes with a long-lasting battery. Obviously, the IRA five-year warranty. Uh, a lot of extras thrown in there as well. Great scope, um, very good for the money, and almost four thousand dollars at the top end of our uh, of our list. And then uh, rounding it out, like Jason said, we, there you know one of these things is not like the other, <laughs> and that would be the AGM Rattler TS thirty five six forty. It is the only scope on the list that is a six forty resolution. It's a two power base magnification. Obviously, comes with the the upgraded American Defense Manufacturing nice locking QD mount. Uh, comes with a three-year warranty, uh, you know, uh, runs on two CR123 batteries, uh, all the other stuff that you would expect with the a AGM Rattlers, uh, very similar in look and design of the other ones, except this is a 640 scope. So they were able to, you know, make the 640 s scope the same size as the other scope. So that's that's good as well. But the only one on the list that's a 640, 
that's what has made this choice it, so it difficult. And, and 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 that's the thing is we're how do how do scopes that aren't six forty contend contend with one that is in the same price range? Yeah. And that's what's really thrown this whole contest <laughs> into uh, chaos is because of that that situation it, right it there. It has. This is already a a packed you know category. And then you throw in a 640 and it doesn't belong. I mean, it, it's, it doesn't belong <laughs> yeah. because, I don't know. I mean, it's comparing a half-ton truck to a three-quarter ton truck. And, I mean, I, I told told Hans, like, well, maybe we got to just pull it out of here, but we can't. I mean, it fits into the price range. And who knows? Can't. Next year there may be more. I, I don't know. I, I don't know. I don't know how to fairly compare it. And, and it is a two-car, you know, which is a little bit different. So, I don't know. This is, this is not going to be easy. So. Maybe later, maybe in the years to come, we've got to start doing these contests not based on price. Maybe it's got to be based on on oh, resolution God. or yeah. or magnification and resolution. But this gets harder we, every. We're year. continue. Yeah, when you when you break it down on price, then you've got these crossovers, and that's where it makes it. We're going to have more and more crossovers because you know, we're going next year. We're going to have. Uh, if you think twenty twenty one was busy, we've yeah. kind of got a preview of 2022 it's going to be it's going to be silly. insane it is. i don't even <laughs> it's know gonna if it's going to be possible to do these shows anymore so <laughs> so, so but we're so we're going to pick our winners uh, and we've like like i said we've got different categories we're going to do if you watch if you haven't watched 187 the best of scopes under 3000 you may not be in the market for a scope under 3000 but I, do this at some point go back and watch the show cuz there's so many people that will buy one of these scopes in the four thousand dollar range, and then come back later on and say, "You know what? I want a buddy scope. Which mm -hmm. what's the best one in the two to three thousand dollar range? Go check mm -hmm. that out." But we're going to do the same lineup, the same categories. We're going to do. Uh, Jason and I are going to pick the, our best bang for the buck. We're going to do uh, best for hog hunters, best for coyote hunters, and our best overall choices. We don't expect them to be exactly the same. We wouldn't be surprised if some of them might match up because <laughs> right. they have in the past. But that, we're going to use the same category. We're going to pick two winners we got to pick two winners <laughs> there's just not a way not to oh, no. uh, in this category um but uh we're gonna go ahead and, and uh i think we should start crowning them okay best <laughs> bang think? for the buck i mean yeah. I, I need to buy some more time so i can think about it so you i've been listening to you go ahead okay i'll go <laughs> yeah i was pretty I, you know for me best bang for the buck how do you not choose the only 640 scope on the list i mean AGM Rattler, TS35, 640, 640 resolution, um, uh, you know, focusable objective lens, the mount, the three-year warranty, you know, good picture image. Uh, it's a two-power base magnification. So it, it is, uh, you know, a, a good hog hunting uh, magnification. But, you know, for coyote hunting, it's not something I think you want to go – and hunt coyotes in South Dakota. And no. by the way, shout out to all the guys in South, South Dakota. My goodness, we get so many calls. I, we might be the favorite dealer for people in South Dakota. <laughs> now I love that because it seems like, and I tell what you what, North them guys Dakota? are as yeah. <laughs> North Dakota. Yeah. Them are some good old boys. They might hunt more than Texans. I'm pretty sure. Right. Cause them boys spend some money on toys. They love to coyote hunt more than I, we might love to pig hunt down here. But anyway, it's not something I would suggest to a guy up there, but I, it, I cannot do this contest. It would be hard for me not to say the biggest bang for the buck is the only 640 resolution scope on the list. And it's a good scope. It, it's not a piece of junk. It's not, you know, just a, a loss leader for the company at all. It is, it's a good legitimate 640 scope, uh, that has its uses. So, I'm going to go with that. I'm going with the Rattler TS 3564. Okay. Well, what say you? I I'm going to take the exact opposite approach of this. I I don't <laughs> shocker. I, I, well, shocker. it is. I I like the scope. I think it's a great scope. I can't argue with your logic, but I'm going to take the different logic because I would be lying if I didn't choose the Super Hogster. And here's my reasoning. Because I talked to guys all day on the phone as i know you do too and a lot of times mm -hmm. they're in that three to thirty five hundred dollar price range they're not in the four thousand dollar price range they're in that that 30 you know again 32 33 35 and when we start talking about the uh the the bearing super hogster the thermion xq38 the bolt 
and the Bravo. Those four get slammed together a lot because they're in that $3,500 and under price range. And I always tell the guys, you know, we go over the, the pros and the cons of each of those scopes and what's better about this and mm-hmm. that. And then I go, at the end of the day, the best bang for the buck is the Super Hogster. And the reason that I say that is, it's because of the price. It is the the least expensive, what we call mid-range or mid-grade thermal image quality. Right. Okay. So you, you get a, a, a Rattler, you know, 384, you know, like a TS25, 35, 384, um, that are, you know, $2,000, $2,500. You get the, the Hogster R25, 35, you know, uh, the, mm-hmm. the Pulsar Thermion we talked about. All those are are good scopes, but when you mm-hmm. break over into this, this super hogster, that is a, an absolute, anybody can look through it and say, oh yeah, image quality is definitely different and better on this scope. So I feel like, you know, don't get me wrong. We're talking about a, a five, $600 upgrade from those other scopes. So that's a lot. I mean, mm-hmm. I get it for a lot of people. They can't quite get there or don't don't feel comfortable. I get it. But if you're in this three to four thousand, I think it's the best bang for the buck because that super hogster mm-hmm. can go up against any of these other scopes. Okay, my, my, mm-hmm. maybe not this Rattler six forty <laughs> and hold its own <laughs> in the image quality right. class. So I think it's the best bang for the buck. But I see what you did, oh, and gosh. I can't argue that the six forty yeah, I mean, you know, it, it is a really, really good bang for the four thousand dollars. Well, <laughs> you're talking about we went different directions. I picked the most expensive scope on the list, and you picked the least expensive well, scope. We see, we see um, who's making all the money. I'm over here counting out yeah. my pennies, and you're you're buying the most so, expensive in every category. So, <laughs> oh, I'm over here like just burning hundred dollar bills. Well, y'all. it's we Christmas time. Money. You got the Sears catalog, <laughs> yeah. so you know you're exactly. You're them out. Well, no. The Super Hulkster, it is. I'm telling you, it is. People love them. And I, we talked about this before, but it, it's hard. To, you usually don't have to go very far on the internet to find just terrible trash information about scopes right. and people dogging scopes. That, isn't, that most you of go the time on, is only that a, isn't a true. quarter percent isn't true. true. I know. I know. Because people call and they're like, hey, I heard this. I know it's on the internet, but I heard this. But... People call up and ask about the super hogs and they're like, man, I looked online and people love them. And that's, you know, that is uh, unusual in this business because it <laughs> most it's hard. To, most people don't go to inter- the Internet to talk about how much they love something. Yeah. They go to the Internet to talk about how much they don't that's love true. something. So, um, yeah, good choice. Right. Super hogs. Let's I go to the next category. So about, and yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll make you go first hunters. on last one. So I'll go first on this one. This is the best okay, category uh, for, or not the best category, but our choice for the best uh, scope for hog hunters. And I am mm-hmm. going to say my choice, and this is tough because I think the Rattler TS35640 is a very logical choice with that two power. Really, really do. But I am such a sucker for the Pulsar Thermions that I think the Thermion 2XQ38 at two and a half power, which is absolutely the hardest scope in this category to get a hold of. It is in the lowest supply and always has been. I do not understand it. Yeah. I don't. If there's one thing that I want to ask Pulsar, you know, if I get those guys face to face, is is like, you know, when you know, January, if we're at the shot show with the factory guys or something like, hey, can y'all not make more of these? Because this is the <laughs> best scope, and we just yeah. love it. So I'm going to go with the Pulsar Thermion 2 XQ38. Uh, for me, what I really like is this is all the features. I and mean, we're talking audio and video. The Pulsar has mm. more reticle options than any other scope on the market. The Thermion specifically does. Mm. Uh, they have more uh, reticle color options. And again, I know, I know guys go, oh, I don't care. I mean, I got white and black and red and green. Great. That's fine. It's probably all that most people need. 
I really, really like getting off on some of these softer tones on smaller reticles. I can hone in a Thermion to the reticle choice that I really, really like. I mean, so that, that means something to me. I just think it's an absolutely great scope for hog hunters. I Now, I'm going to make a point here. The Thermions are not good if you want to pull the scope off and use it as a handheld. That's a big deal for a lot of people. They don't have a handheld. Hans and I run dedicated handhelds, so the Thermions are perfectly fine for us. So that's why this is my pick. This is an example of it. Might not be your pick. If you don't have a handheld and you're going to be pulling your, your scope off, this might not be the best choice for, for you know somebody in that situation. Absolutely love this scope. Personally, Thermion 2, XQ38. Hans, what do you say? Well, I say um, that I agree with that so much that I also chose that Whoa. as my favorite hog Whoa. hunting thermal scope. Yeah, the Thermion 2, XQ38, you're exactly right. Um these scopes are in such high demand. People call and they're um, rarely ever on the shelf. Uh, yep, <laughs> uh, and yep. if they are, it is a miracle. Uh, but uh, they are in such high demand that Pulsar could sell these. Uh, they could sell a ton of XQ38s. There's no doubt. And and a lot of people will call up and say, hey, I'm interested in XQ38. Um, you know, and then they might start talking about something else or, or you know, or, or whatever. But yeah, the XQ38, for the reasons that Jason uh, mentioned, um, the most user-friendly scope on the list, the, the all the reticle choices. If you are a, if you consider yourself a long-range shooter, I wouldn't necessarily say that this is a no. long-range thermal no. scope. There's not, there's no, I don't think there's anything such, uh, such a thing as a long-range thermal scope, to tell you the truth. I don't think that they're made for that, but... If you are a long range shooter, you love reticle choices and you love all your different reticles. And this has more reticles to choose from than any of them. Like you said, different uh, color choices for reticles, uh, different types, 13 or 14 different reticle choices. But video with audio, uh, you know, uh, uh, if you are a bolt gun lover, um, you should seriously consider the Thermion. I mean, uh, it is. Shooting it on a bolt-action rifle feels as comfortable as laying on your favorite pillow. I mean, it is just, it is nice. It feels, it's just fits like a glove, you know, fits like a glove. But, you know, two and a half power, great for hog hunting as far as if you're shooting hogs at 30 yards, shooting hogs at 100 yards. I mean, it's still doable. I love how easy the picture-in-picture display is to get up on the screen. It's just basically pressing one button, a long press of one button. And I use the picture in picture display a lot. Other scopes on this list have picture in picture, but it's harder to get to on the screen. Uh, on the Pulsar, you can bring it up and take it away just as quick, as easy as, as anything. And it is as far as, uh, ingenuity and, and, and intuitiveness, I think it's, yeah, I think as far as intu intuitiveness, uh, it's the best on the list. Yeah, it is. Um, I like so it. that's why I chose it. Uh, it is a great uh, it is a great choice for hog hunters, um, and uh, we we okay. Love this them. next category, them. if we don't pick the same scope here, we may have to split up. This may be like a band that breaks up. This may be the breakup. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know how you can't choose the scope I'm thinking of here, but I'm going to let you go first to see whether the late night vision show goes on next week or not. What is your, your favorite pick for a coyote hunter? Now, granted, listen, guys, there's a lot of these scopes right here. will work for coyote hunters and do work, but there's one of these that I think when I think coyote hunter, we're talking about the guys Hans was talking about, the South Dakota, the North Dakota, the mm -hmm. the long range. And I said, we're going to talk about the long range. I agree with you. It's a long range scope. Mm -hmm. But I mean, the guys that are consistently <laughs> having to shoot right. 150, 200, 250 yards. What scope is that, Hans? So this isn't for the guy that's like, oh, I'm a hog hunter, but sometimes I'll shoot hogs too. Or this is coyote, this is for yeah. a guy that's like, yeah, or coyote, coyote, coyote. this is for the guy that says, 
I've never seen a hog. I, I don't know if I could really, we don't have those and we probably may never have those. This is for you, all you coyote hunters that's in, never in seen a hog. Country, <laughs> in farm country too. Let me be clear. I talk to guys that yeah. are in Pennsylvania that say they can only see 200 yards. This is not the scope for you. Yeah. This is the, no, this is no. the guy hunting, you know, big plowed ground, yeah. big, you know, sections. He's hunting. I talked to a guy today, man, I'm, I'm, I pull up, uh, to sections, you know, 640 acres, square miles, and I get out of the truck and I can see four miles, a mile in each direction, and I can hunt every mile of it. So this is for that guy. That's, this is like, yeah. Yeah, We're exactly. Obviously and, on the same and I, was I can quick, tell now. It's for exactly. sure. Quick, very, very quick story. I, I was in West Texas uh, hunting with our pro staffer, Patrick, and we were scanning a field and we saw something. And he's like, hey, you want to stalk over to it? We thought it was a pig. And I was like, Dude, that's like a mile away. <laughs> and I did not. St- I am not walking that far for one pig. Uh, it, it turned out it was it was not a pig. We got a little closer. It was deer. But yeah, this is for you guys that like are looking a mile. This isn't for anything else. So my pick, easy. I think very easy. The the Ira Rico MK1 384. It's a four power. And the four power show base magnification goes on next week, folks. This is not the breakup yeah. of. Of the late night fishing yeah. show, good, yes, good, yes. The Rico, the Rico 384, four power, three eighty four resolution, um, long battery life. I mean, the battery runs eight to ten hours. It's removable, so you can buy an extra battery, um, you know, and, and keep in your pocket. The, the battery system is great. Okay. I do want to. Uh, I do want to five. I'm sorry. Just want to okay. make a correction. Battery pack runs six plus hours up to eight, not eight to uh, 10. I just don't want some guy buying it being sideways. So, so six to eight hour battery. Uh, Jason's conservative. I, I am conservative. Yeah. I, I, I just did not it, vote for no, Joe if Biden, you're in cold so. weather, if you're, in, if you're in cold weather, it is not going to last eight to 10 no, hours. I no, I promise. That. But, a but it is less. a very good um, rechargeable, removable battery pack for sure. Very good. And you can get extra battery yep. for it. You can get two extra batteries, whatever, and keep them in your pocket. Um, the picture image, like I said earlier, almost 640 it's quality, but it's good. 384. Very good. Um, it's got four different color palettes. I mean, honestly, y'all, black hot, white hot. I don't need more. I don't need more than two. <laughs> so that's just me. Yeah, I agree. Uh, if you got black hot, it's like the old pulsar scopes. You had two choices. That was it, and that's all we needed. Yeah. But no. Uh, but it, you know, great you're, scope. You're for, if you are. No, I'm sorry, I interrupted. Am I forgetting something? You're forgetting important? something major. It's the only scope well, in this category that you can buy and add on a removable oh, yeah. modular well, laser range finder right. that plugs right into the side of the scope. So if you are that guy that's having to shoot out there, sometimes at longer ranges, those coyotes or fox or other predators get hung up out there and you're hunting where yeah. you don't have a tree for a mile and you can't tell how far it is, uh, this is the scope that allows you to mm-hmm. add on right. a laser range finder that, you know, infrared makes for this unit. So it's yep. the only scope out there uh, that, well, it's, it's big brother. The Rico 640 does totally the different class, but yeah. I mean, this IRA Rico yep. is the only scope that does that. So if you need yep. a laser range so finder to add on and you can decide that down the road, you don't have to make that decision the day you buy it. It's modular. Right. It comes off and on. So anyway, that's another big plus. For those of you in Ben Wheeler, Texas, modular, I think means removable and <laughs> and retachable. I don't know. Uh, I, but that's, for all y'all out that, there. That's what I think it means, too. We <laughs> hope that's what it means. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So, yeah, you're right. Thanks for bringing that up. For And right now, $800 uh, will get you that, that laser range finder uh, add-on unit. Great. It's a great feature. The only scopes in the market right now that allow you to be able to do that um, and integrate that, just it's a plug and play system. So, I mean, I like I already know what you're going to pick, but what are your reasons? Are they you have any different than what I nope, said? Ditto. I don't have to waste anybody's yeah. time. Uh, that is an absolutely fabulous scope. Listen to me, guys. Uh, you know we've we've belabored this point here. We just like over and over beat it into the bush of of who it's really good for and why. I don't want you to feel like. Yeah, man, I, I hunt coyotes and, you know, why can't I use a super hogster or why can't I use a bolt TL30 or whatever? You sure can. Okay. Those scopes are great for that. Mm. But the guys that are the, I'm serious, the all 
in, they have coyotes on their underwear. Okay. I mean, this is, they, they are serious about it and they are doing a lot of, of shooting out there in, you know, 150, 200 yards and over. Not that this scope can't be used under that, but they are serious. They want the image quality and the magnification uh, with all the bells and the whistles and the batteries mm-hmm. and whatever. It's a fabulous scope. And, and Hans has, has said it. I don't have to keep saying it. But I mean, the uh, uh, image quality is fantastic. So no no need in me just running it on in, you know, what you've said. It's, it's a heck of a scope uh, for that that market, you know, it doesn't work for me. Kaya, I'm mean, not say Kaya, hog hunting, uh, does, you know, I'm getting way too close. It does not do it. Now, if we go out on a night of coyote hunting, I might can make it work, uh, for, for what yeah. we're doing. But, uh, you know, I know you can, Hans, you used it a lot and, and liked it for that. But so again, specific yeah. pick for a specific, uh, you know, type yeah. of, of hunting, but Hans, we got to move use that scope a lot. I used that scope a lot, and all the coyotes, they didn't want to cooperate. They wanted to run right up my leg. Was... So I didn't get to shoot anything. Hey, I'm not going to argue about calling a, a coyote in my lap. So, hey, overall picks. Yeah, Hans, what, what is you your think? overall We're going pick to... right not... here? Okay. Best, this my is your best pick. pick. I want to be clear, everybody. I'm interrupting. This, this is, is my Hans' favorite, favorite yeah. scope out of these. Doesn't mean it's, you know, the best scope for you. This is Hans's pick. I cannot wait because I do not know what he's going to pick. My favorite choice in the three to four thousand dollar price range is different than anything that we've talked about on this best of list. We haven't even mentioned it, so it's kind of unusual just to bring it up at the very end as my overall. But it is going to be the IRA USA Bravo, mm. and I'm going to tell you those things. People love them, and they do. they, they sell out quick. People are just I don't know. Well, I'll say this: um, IRA USA uh, does a good job with marketing. Um, they've got some. I think all. I think a lot of the, the companies on this do great with marketing. Um, but they, they did some good marketing around the alphas and the bravos and stuff, um, which we're talking about the alpha and still, still haven't come. It's a ghost That's scope, right. but, uh, <laughs> the Bravo, um, I'll recap real quick. The, the positives for it. I mean, comes with an upgraded ADM lock and QD mount. Uh, it's got a, a unusual, I say unusual. It's got a really cool design of a scope, very small and compact, but you know it's got the textured housing it's tactile buttons obviously it's focusable objective lens uh and ip stopter um you know i think that the iray usa and and the other iray and infrared scopes come with a very good app the infrared outdoor app is a very very good app very easy to get videos on and off the scope put them on the on the computer uh comes with a 5 year warranty which is a big big deal uh in i mean it's it's uh, one of the best warranties out there on the market, if not the best. Uh, so with all that, combined with the fact that it's got fantastic picture images, 384 resolution, 12 micron, it's a three power. So I get guys that are down here now, these hog hunters down here in Texas and in the south, Jason, they're not just hog hunters anymore. They're basically, if it walks out at night, they're shooting right. it. <laughs> so that makes them coyote hunters too. And so everybody now... When I call and say, hey, what, what are you doing with it? And they say, well, mostly hog, but I do like to coyote hunt too. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, you've got more and more people that need to be able to have a scope that is effective at shorter ranges that still has a decent field of view uh, and can be able to reach out to a couple hundred yards to shoot a coyote. And so that three power base magnification is perfect. Um, it, you know, as far as the picture image on it, really, really good, very good picture image. I like the menu set up on it. I think it's the menus easy to use. Um, I mean, people love them. And I, I would say this, it's uh, when you lay out all the features and all the positives, um, the only downside when I tell people when I'm talking about this scope, the only downside, it doesn't come with rechargeable batteries, right. you know, but for $3,500, you're getting all of these great features so either you're going to run it off of extra uh, uh, off of two CR one two three batteries, or like people are like oh you know that's not a big deal, or you can run it off an external battery pack. So it comes with you know it has a USB magnetic uh, port that the cable charges into. It goes into external battery pack. Those external battery packs, y'all, are basically a cell phone charger that you can buy anywhere. Sure. They're cheap. You can have a whole pocket full of them, charge them up, and you're running all night, and you're not buying batteries every time. So you know. I know we hadn't talked about it a lot on, you know, previously in this show, 
But that I'm going to say that is my overall pick because it, it is the scope. I'm not going to say it has the most uh, most thought put into design because that's not true. All these scopes have a lot of thought put into design. Uh, the Thermion definitely, you know, there's not a company out there that's more innovative than Pulsar. But with the iRay scope, there's a lot of attention to detail specific to what we do hunting at night. You can tell by the fact that they put the magnetic USB port on it. It comes with the mount, the upgraded mount, like I said. So with that being said, and with all that being said, I'm going to say the iRay USA Bravo is going to be my my overall pick for the three to four thousand dollars. Okay, I want to say a couple quick things about that. First of all, can't disagree with any of that. But Hans said the word twice: tactile buttons. For all of you people here around me in Appleby, Texas, I have absolutely no idea what tactile means. But just so anyway, I, I know you're letting the people in your area <laughs> know that you don't. That's the <laughs> official description. Yeah, tactile. I guess it means. Well, they're, they're, the rays, it's got the little buttons okay. on top well, of the It's well, got buttons on buttons. Okay, well, you How were about excited that? about it. So I just wanted to let, let the people out it's around a Appleby out word, here. You know, it's, you it's know. A, yeah, hey, and people in Appleby, don't ask what tech tile yeah, means. Hey, just, it's important. You know, I, I do want to say I, something. I can't say, I can't, this is a this is a G-rated show. I can't say the, what I feel like yeah, I know. those no, represent. Yeah, it's but G-rated show. <laughs> okay, so here is... <laughs> Here's one thing I'm gonna I'm gonna say it before I give my pick. I'm talking about the 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 Bravo here. Agree with 100 percent of it. And one thing that I have to give them, meaning IRA USA, is this design. It is a cool housing. It is a I think they call it sniper gray. It's a gray color. Mm-hmm. It, it it's looks cool. Now I know. I'll be the first guy to agree with you. When I'm out there in the dark, the hogs and the coyotes don't care what my scope looks like. I hope they don't get close enough to see it. It doesn't matter. But people on Instagram care when you're taking pictures. That's right. But (laughs) I will say this. I'm going to, I'm going to go on the record. This is going to become more and more important. And the reason why is this, you just take pickup trucks. Okay. Trucks yeah. got better and better and more reliable and more horsepower until what did we have? We had this race where I know you can be a Ford guy, you can be a Chevy guy, whatever. But in reality, those of us that are reasonable guys understand that most all of these trucks are really good trucks. And, you know, you may have your favorite, but at the end of the day, they're all good trucks. So what do these manufacturers have to do? Well, they started putting in all kinds of bells and whistles until they all got the same bells and whistles. They've got to make it look cool. It's who's got the coolest body, you know, who's got the new design, who's got the the best colors or whatever. That's what's it's got. There's got to be. Yeah, there's got to be a cool, a cool factor to it for sure. That's going to happen. And I know you go, well, that isn't what I'm looking for. And you may not be today, but when you bought your truck. You were looking for it. You may not have known you were looking for it, but you go, yeah. man, I don't like the way them whatevers look like. I, Everybody does it. And and you could say, well, man, I'm just buying a truck to go, you know, drive down the road and haul my trailer. I don't care what it looks like, but but we do subconsciously. So the, the point no, I'm making and, is- And you're like, yeah, the truck is like, oh, well- you know, those step bars don't look, That's that right. color step bars don't look good with that truck. <laughs> well, yeah. if you go into a gun shop and you have a choice of a pistol mm-hmm. and that pistol has a red dot on it, are you going to choose a, a coyote tan pistol with a black red dot? Yeah. Are you going to choose a coyote tan pistol with a Ooh, coyote tan red dot scope on? <laughs> so, uh, I, you know, so yeah, yeah I mean, there's a cool factor. People want to act like, oh, I don't care about that, but I promise you. People care yeah, about that. Yeah, and what my point is, is that this is going to be a turning point, I believe, for the industry. Yeah. As long as people right. like IRA continue to do this, it's going to push these other manufacturers to go, well, we don't want to lose, you know, 3% of our sales because 3% of the people cared what it looked like. I mean, you know, it, it's it's going to matter. So anyway, mm-hmm. love the scope. All right. My pick is going to be, uh, this is a hard choice, but I think... I don't know. I don't even know if I still know. So I'm just have to pick one. I think if I, I'd say it to you like this, if I was going to go buy one of these scopes today for myself, pick it out, put it on my rifle and go hunting, which is mostly hog hunting. 
I would probably choose the Pulsar Thermion 2 XQ38. I just really like this scope. It's the, the Thermions have been around longer than anything on this list. I'm just looking down this list to make sure I'm not leaving somebody out. The Thermions yeah. have been around uh, since, you know, January of 2019. Now, the Thermion 2 XQ38 right. is actually a new scope. I mean, mm -hmm. that's new for this year. Mm -hmm. But it's the same design, okay? It's just some upgraded right. internals image quality. It's tried. It's true. I'm very, very familiar with it. Hans and I have been shooting the Thermions, specifically like the XP50s, yeah. uh, since they were released on the market. So we're big Thermion fans. I think I got to pick that scope because for me, as the the Southern Hog Hunter doing mostly that, the two and a half power is in my wheelhouse. If I need to go out there and kill some coyotes or something at, you know, 150, 200 yards, I can do it. I want to be clear, all these scopes, every one of these is capable of shooting over 200 yards. I mean, it's that yeah. they'll shoot probably over 300. I'm not capable. So I'm just going to say out to a couple yeah. hundred uh you yeah. know, Pulsar, you say that. I've seen you shoot. The, the one thing that we really, really like about Pulsar, and this is where it's hard to not, you know, give them the credit they deserve in a lot of these categories is that, and I will go on the record and say this, and I, I say this as a challenge to the other manufacturers on this list. So I, I know everybody is, is trying to come out with new stuff and, and do innovative things. But Pulsar is and has been the one brand that is consistently year after year pushing and driving the thermal market. If Pulsar didn't mm. exist, I don't believe this podcast would exist. I don't believe that the industry would be where it is because one of the complaints that people make about Pulsar is I just bought my scope last year and now they've got a new one. There's a new model. There's a new... Well, it's mm. true, but it's the same thing yeah. Apple did with the iPhone. They pushed right. all the other manufacturers. They had to push these Android phones to get better, to do better things, mm -hmm. because they continued to just yeah. make them better and better. And so, again, I, I know you're going, well, that's not talking about the, the Thermion 2 XQ38, but it, it really is. I mean, sleek design, slick. Uh, they're European and I explain this to guys all the time. When you pick up a Pulsar and you handle it and you feel it and you look at it, you get into the menus, you look at the buttons. These are made by the same type of people. And I say type of people, Europeans that are known for making high end luxury watches and boots and belts and clothes and cars. I mean, there's a reason it's attention to detail. Mm. So I really, really like the scope. Again, I think I could reach into a bag and pull a name out and say, yep, that's my favorite scope, and I would be comfortable doing that. But you put me on the spot, I'm choosing the Thermion 2 XQ38. So I'm glad you mentioned that and the fact that you said Pulsar has is, is basically been driving the industry for several years and continue to do so. And I think what all of you see now is a bunch of other companies that are – starting to close the gap yeah, <laughs> and, and they're doing that. And, but that's a great thing for everybody. It it's a great thing for the consumer. It's a great thing for these thermal companies. Uh, I mean, you think about how f great this is going to push Pulsar to do even better things and, and they are. And uh, so we are excited about that. So let's recap this real quick for all you people out there. Uh, best bang for the buck. I picked the AGM Rattler TS 35, 640. Jason picked the bearing optics, super hogster. Uh, the best, Hog hunting thermal scope under four thousand uh, dollars. We both picked the Thermion Two XQ thirty eight yep. and best thermal scope under four thousand dollars for you coyote hunters. We both picked the Iray Rico MK one three eighty four. That's the most agreement we've had. I mean, that's, I know that's, we've had. That's, yeah. uh, that's something else. Um, our overall picks were quite different. I, I went with the Iray USA Bravo. Uh, the 384, and you went with the Pulsar Thermion 2 XQ38. So that is your your roundup, and congratulations to the winners. This has been the best of uh, under $4,000 thermal scope. Y'all, we've got more coming up very soon. Thank you all for joining us. So if, I will tell you this. If that just muddied up the water for you so much more that you're more confused than you were before, uh, give us a call. 
if you are, if you like, you've answered all my questions and you've solved my problem and I know what I want, give us a call. <laughs> 877-350-1818. You can talk to me or Jason. Uh, we're both taking phone calls and I promise you, we're taking phone calls all day long, y'all. And so we are helping you out. Um, we're comparing these scopes. We're breaking it down. We're giving you the positives, negatives, negatives, advantages, and disadvantages. But we'd love the chance to earn your business, and you can do so again. Eight seven seven three five zero one eight one eight outdoorlegacygear dot com. Check out all of our past episodes and, and the, all one hundred eighty seven previous episodes on the late night vision show dot com. Uh, if you missed our last episode, best thermal scope under three thousand. Trust me, you get in the thermal game. At some point, I promise you, you will have more than one thermal. And whether it be a handheld or a buddy scope, go check it out. Go check out Best Thermal Scopes Under $3,000. That is episode 187 last week. Um, if you want to find more about Outdoor Legacy, you do, you can do so. Uh, you can find uh, Jason on Instagram, on Facebook, on uh, uh, the Texas hog hunting, uh, or our hog hunting, Texas. No, you're the all Texas hunting yeah. forum, somewhere over there. I'm trying, he's all I'm trying to remember all the places. I'm trying to remember all the corners you Let, hang out on, but I'm, I'm on hanging Facebook, out at work. Uh, is where I'm hanging out. <laughs> yeah. Facebook on Instagram, on, on YouTube, uh, all at the, uh, outdoor legacy or outdoor legacy gear. Um, obviously I gave you the website, the phone number. You can find me on, you can find me on two places. Uh, you can find me on uh, out uh, on Outdoor Legacy. You can find me at Outdoor Legacy, but you can find me on uh, Instagram at H A N S E T X as Hans E T X, and on YouTube. Um, I'm coming out here uh, with more reviews, more hunts all the time. So go check those out. Uh, you know, I do a lot of the hunts. I do a lot of the the through the scope reviews. So and they tend to be a little bit shorter. So you can go check those out and finish them up pretty quickly. I am not going to put show links in there. Uh, on my videos, y'all can just uh, y'all can just do, tune in here for that for those. But anyway, okay. I don't think. I, what are we doing next week? Tell them what the show we're doing week, next week. Good Lord, will and creek don't rise. We will be doing. It's a good question. There's going to be a debate of what we're doing <laughs> next week because okay, uh, we're going to do another best of. But we may have to. We got to look at this because some of these categories uh, may have to combine some categories. We've got to. We don't want to do a category with one scope, so we got. We got to kind of look at it. We're going to see what we're going to do. It's going to be another best of. We're going to be doing. Yeah, yeah, we're going to be doing. You know, five, six thousand high end. We're going to not high end. Monocular. Yeah, we're not. Not high end. Come back next week. There's going to be a show, and it's going to be a best of night vision. We're going to do night vision. Yeah, we're going to do. We're going to do everything. Yeah. So y'all, y'all just keep tuning in. We hadn't decided. And yeah, I, I, we, we, yeah. Hans doesn't know that I've been over here scratching notes. So yeah, we're, we got to oh, we got to talk man. about this. But hey, folks, clear that with your Hans told position. you all about where to find us. So we know this show has gone long, but uh, we hope you enjoyed it. Hope you got some information out of it. Check back next week and all the following weeks. We'll have more great shows and information for you here. Between now and then, y'all stay safe in the fields. Keep making those bacon pancakes. <laughs>